show you a quick tip uh, for painting doors. Now these doors here are primed but then they've gone and scored this sort of accent line in. And so this is essentially just like bare MDF. So if you paint this with a water-based paint, um, this isn't going to be very smooth. Plus this edge uh, isn't very nice either. So in order to get a really nice finish like this without it bubbling up and so it looks very similar to the actual uh, the pre-primed surface, um, I've got a quick tip I'll show you today which will get these looking fantastic. First step is to just take off this rough edge. So I've got some 220 sandpaper and I'm just going to go very quickly down that edge. Now that we've got that sanded and dusted, now I'm just going to use some just regular dap uh, that you'd use for sealing um, your joints in any trim work. And we're going to lay some of this down. Uh, now a very, very thin bead. We don't want to be filling uh, this reveal. We just want to be sort of sealing. We're using it more to seal the wood than anything else or the MDF in this case. I'm just using a bit of a wet, wet finger here. Just the smallest amount of dap we have sealed at MDF. Now that won't uh, bubble up on us as we paint. My second tip for getting great results when you're painting doors is to give it a light sand. Now, um, if you've got a textured finished door, then obviously you don't want to be, uh, you know, sanding too much or you're going to get that textured finish um, off. However, make sure that you take a look at all of the edges and make sure that they've got, um, you know, a good round over to them. They don't have any sharp edges. The problem with sharp edges uh, is that your paint is not going to flow around uh, a sharp edge very nice. Same with why we took the sandpaper down to these sharp edges here. Um, you can have a, a modestly sharp edge, but if it is like a freshly cut sharp edge, the paint isn't going to really stick right on to this, you know, tiny, tiny edge. Uh, so if you get a bit, a bit of a round over then that does allow the paint to sort of roll around it. If you've got that sharp edge, as the paint settles, it'll actually settle away from that edge. And the amount of paint that you have on that sharp edge is going to be very, very minimal, um, if any at all. So depending on what your background color is, like here, uh, you could potentially end up with a very dark line because you'd see the wood through the white paint we're putting it on. tip for painting doors is that if you don't have a lot of doors to paint and you do have a little extra time um, and especially if you're not an experienced painter paint them flat so this isn't how the pros do it they would all stand all of your doors up for your whole house in one room um, have them kind of angled apart from each other and spray all of them both sides all at once now this is good however um, if you can, and if you're not very experienced using a spray gun, um, if you lay them down flat, the chances that you get a run in your paint is significantly less. 
Uh, if you're gonna have a run, it's gonna be down on the side and that isn't gonna be that much of a worry. If you have too much paint that you end up putting down on top or on your, on your door surface, it will just end up laying flat. So still something you want to avoid, um, but this increases your, your sort of margin for error, I guess, um, by doing it this way. So uh, with these big flat panels, uh, or flat panel door design that I have here, um, if I get a run, it's gonna look horrible. Uh, even the professional painters that I had come in and paint uh, kind of the rest of the house, the same door style, uh, they painted them vertically and they've got a little bit of paint buildup where the paint sort of sagged down and then sat just before this lip. So um, I'll try to get some shots of it, but uh, of some of the other doors, but basically there's a lip right about here on each of these panels going down because the paint sort of sagged and then has sort of held up um, right before running into these uh, grooves here. Um, if you want to paint both sides of the doors, uh, you can put a couple screws in the ends here and then just support them on some tables or whatever and then use the cutout that you have for your door handle uh, to flip the door over. Um, so you can paint one side and then lift up on that, flip the door over, and then paint the second side with it supported off the two screws and just sitting kind of on the edge of uh, a table or a stand. Now I've got the door all ready to paint. So I've got my two screws in and it's just resting right there on the edge. And that will allow me to cover this all in paint as well as get the edges and I don't have any place where it is going to be sticking to my surface as I rotate the door to the other side. Uh, I've got the two screws supporting the door, allowing me to paint it in the flat position and to rotate it to get the other side. My fourth tip for painting doors is to thin down your paint and to use something like this for latex paint. So this is a latex additive and extender and uh, what this will do is it'll thin out the paint um, as well allow a longer cure time which will allow the paint to sort of uh, flatten out and sit out or uh, level out I guess and flow um, a lot better than it would otherwise so if you do end up putting a little extra paint down especially in this flat position it will allow that to sort of flow out and become an even coat. Now, if you are using a brush or something like this to do trim uh, down the line or for another project, this will also help you in that case, um, eliminate some of those brush strokes and to allow that uh, paint to flow a little bit better and flow into where you've got sort of those brush marks. All right, so after all that prep work, we can finally get down to some painting. So what I'm using here for a spray gun is a Fuji Q5 um, turbine sprayer. So this is kind of a, a higher end sprayer, I would say, um, especially for the, for the DIY market. They do make some other uh, cheaper units um, or more cost effective, I guess. So they've got uh, a Q3, a Q4, um, this is the Q5. And uh, basically what that uh, is designating is, is how many uh, fans it has in the unit and the overall pressure and air volume that it can push. So the larger units do allow you to run some thicker paints and uh, you know allow you to run a, a slightly higher pressure as well. So to get the latex paint down, um, I have up to the size of the nozzle from what would come uh, factory with the guns. So factory, I believe it's a 1.3 or a 1.4 that will come uh, with the gun. Um, I've got a 2.2 millimeter nozzle that I'm using in this one, and uh, that is uh, working with the thinned uh, latex paint. There are a couple different guns that they offer as well. Uh, this one, the cup's a little bit smaller, but you can change the angle of the cup. So um, I got this one uh, as one of the two guns that I have for this unit. And this is really handy for spraying in kind of awkward uh, angles 
Uh, you can shoot up with it, down with it, uh, doesn't really matter. You can always get that uh, cup uh, in an angle that uh, you're going to have good paint feed to the gun. These guns are also uh, very adjustable and uh, very nice to work with. You can adjust the size of the pattern um, or the width of the spray uh, as well as the amount of paint that is coming out and the adjustments are very precise, very easy and uh, very repeatable to go back to. So now it's time for the flip and, and get ready to paint the other side of the door. Uh, you have to be fairly delicate with this, it's not a, uh, a perfect process by any means, but uh, this will allow you to paint both sides of the door in the flat position. Get that nice even coat of paint across the whole surface of the door. Um, just make sure you're overlapping your spray patterns and you notice here that I'm staying a consistent distance away from the door at all times. So if you're going uh, sort of in towards the door and away from the door uh, and increasing that distance between the door and the gun or whatever surface you're painting, uh, you're kind of affecting the amount of paint that you're putting down in each area and that's going to show up in your final finish. you found these five tips uh, helpful and will uh, improve the uh, quality and success of your uh, paint jobs uh, and in uh, painting doors as well. Please check out my other videos. I got a whole pile of videos uh, documenting the entire process of developing my full basement into a uh, living space. So everything from uh, electrical to subfloor panels to uh, painting tips to trim tips um, and everything kind of in between, including tile work and in-floor heating. So uh, hopefully if you're working on a project yourself, there would be something you'll find uh, useful and helpful in uh, completing your project. So stay tuned for the next episode, and thanks for watching.